Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video I'm out here at Bushcraft Wonderland working on my bushcraft shelter and I thought for today's video I'd bring a pretty cool tool to work with today. So here in my hands I have the Topps Knives Kuma Kage Short Sword designed by Wei Sun Johnny Sai. Now, short swords and bushcraft, how does that go together? Well, we are going to find out. Today is bushcraft by short sword. I thought this might make a very fun way to just enhance my experience out here. You know, part of the reason why I'm out here working on a bushcraft shelter in the first place is just to use cool tools and to enjoy them out here. And so why not bring out a short sword for that purpose? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get to work using this kumakage in a number of different sort of bushcraft tasks. I know that's not the norm, but hey, it's a tops knife, it's a sword, and it is just damn cool and I'm out here today to enjoy myself. And then after that, we're gonna get this back home. I'm gonna do actually some wood processing trying to get myself a fire. So who is this Kumakage for? It's hard to say, but for me today, this is definitely gonna be a cool companion out here and I am absolutely going to enjoy this. And so with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. So here as I get into this, this tree here is about six inches in diameter, so pretty good sized tree. Now it's completely dead and I'm going to use this for a ridge pole on my shelter. And again, well, using the short sword, let's see what this can do. This is going to be wild. And so very first, my initial impressions, well, you can see I'm attempting to aim for the belly. Now, this does overall have fairly good forward weight, but being a sword, first thing is, it is extremely balanced. So it's not like fully forward weighting. I mean, obviously you have a lot of blade mass up in front of the handle, but at the same time, it's not like an ax where you have a big head and a big mass way out on the handle to give you that overall chopping power. Overall, I do have to say, this is throwing some pretty good chunks. You know, as we look at this here, obviously some pretty good bite and some pretty good slicing. You will notice on a lot of these, some very clean cuts, nice and deep and through. That's pretty wild. I mean, again, this here is oak, you can tell by the uh, grain structure and the color of the wood. So that's good hard wood there. Being oak, this is definitely gonna be a challenge for any tool, uh, but the sword here actually doing a pretty good job. So Kumakage, <laughs> so far, biting pretty deep and throwing some good chunks. So you can see the kumakage there was both very effective and very cool. I mean, doing that work with a short sword is definitely fun. And in that case, it did a nice job establishing my notch. So then moving forward with the saw, easily able to land the tree exactly where I wanted to. So 
Is it the most effective? Eh, probably not, but is it damn cool? Absolutely. Now a couple of impressions as I was performing that work. It's a fairly hard task and you need to chop fairly hard. And with that, you definitely rely on a good grip. Now I can tell you that I definitely felt shock in a number of areas hitting that hard. And the first thing is this handle is, I would say not really the longest for me in the size of my hands and in terms of a full two-handed grip. So as you see there, you can see that I completely fill out the area between the guard and the back pommel area. And that back pommel area having that hard beak and that is a pronounced sort of tip and point on there. So you definitely can't really wrap your fingers around the backside. It does require a full grip here. And I think what was creating the shock right here in my thumb was this angle. So you'll notice that the leading edge of the scales has an angle. So when I was gripping, because my fingers and my hands are filling this out all the way, I definitely end up gripping up in here and hitting that hard and getting the shock from the wood translating through the steel and all the way into the handle. I definitely felt it. Not a big deal. I'm just saying that, you know, as I grip this and I feel the overall ergonomics, that's definitely something to consider. And so the Kumakage working wonderfully as a draw knife, doing a wonderful job. Now, plenty of blade length, plenty of handle. In fact, I was kind of even getting up here and sort of gripping on this portion of the blade. And the nice thing is actually, because of these little grooves, now that's mostly a styling detail that, you know, Waysun Johnny Sai has a particular look with the uh, Kuma, sort of lineup and a lot of his knives having that little bit of a style in the grind but that actually aided in my ability to get a little bit of grip right there which was nice and then plenty of blade depth so the idea being that as i'm grabbing onto this no worries that i was going to get near the actual cutting edge at all so working very well and just planing down and getting through the bark and cleaning that right up so this worked extremely well for that, quite comfortable in the hand and very effective. Perfectly dead pine here that I absolutely should harvest. But the hard thing is landing this exactly where I need, but let's go for it.
Okay. And so the next test, the limbing tasks. Let's see how the Kumakage does with some limbing. Nice fat wood. So certainly not perfect, but also not too bad at the limbing tasks. Now the main thing for me was, you noticed I spent a lot of time figuring out where to stand. So unlike an ax, where you end up with the head sticking out further than the handle, you have the ability to kind of swing and keep your body out of the way. Now here with the short sword, I definitely needed to be a lot more careful about my body placement, where I was swinging, and this isn't like, a knife. If it was a large knife, that would be one thing because I know I can keep the bulk of my body out of the way, but the short sword is long enough that it can reach your knees, your shins, your feet without too much difficulty. So body placement and specific strikes and being careful, definitely a must with the short sword. But Kumakage doing these bushcraft tasks, this is again, not only fairly effective, but very, very fun. And so there's no doubt very many bushcraft tasks that require cutting some sort of cordage. And while using the kumakage for cutting cordage, that's gonna be a little bit on the ridiculous side. But bottom line is, can it do it? Well, I'm fairly certain it should do it without too much problem. So just here, a little bit of bank line, no problem. Now you do need to get way up on the tip but just pulling and right through. But if I wanted to, I can sort of double, triple, quadruple this up. This is actually five strands thick and getting through just carefully. And there's plenty of blade here to just slice. So is it the most practical? No, can you do it? Of course you can, and bottom line is, if I'm using a short sword for bushcraft tasks, well, cutting cordage is gonna be part of the fun as well.
And so well at this point, that about wraps it up out here for the Kuma Kage. But I have a lot more work that I need to do with this. What about the firecraft tasks? Well, what I thought I'd do is go back home and, well, you know me, I love having a good ripping fire. So let's get this Kage back home and see how it does with some firecraft tasks. So the Kumakage doing an absolutely fantastic job 
with the splitting tasks. Everything from chopping down and splitting through the wood, batoning, no problem. Excellent cracking action, and that's what you'll see. If you look back at some of that footage, you'll notice just the wedging power of the Kumakage. It worked extremely well. Then on top of that, just blasting down, sort of cross batoning, but not really batoning, more like cross chopping down and through the wood and just sending it flying. In a couple of cases, some real stubborn pieces. I mean, heavy, heavy knots, and that wood is really pretty tough. That's a combination of oak and maple, so a good dense hardwood, a real good test here for the Kumakage, but I gotta say, not only was that fun, but this absolutely shined. If you think it's fun using an ax to split wood or a large knife, we'll try doing it with a short sword. That's next level stuff. Kumakage, very, very good for the splitting tasks. But what about those finer tasks? Well, let's give it a shot. You know, without a finger choil, this is gonna be a little bit unwieldy, but at the same time, I have a pretty good suspicion that this is gonna do a decent job. So let's give it a shot. Certainly not the most balanced, but not terrible. And I am able to keep the leading edge fairly level. Now, again, without a finger choil, it is gonna be a little bit difficult to balance, but doing a reasonable job, not getting the best bite and angle. Sometimes that's the edge geometry. Sometimes that's just the piece of wood and I think here it's a little combination of both. Now again, this being oak, it is gonna be a little more stubborn. I should maybe get myself a piece of maple, see if it goes a little bit better. The oak can be a little bit difficult sometimes. And I can tell you, holding up this overall length of blade, Definitely some fatigue in the forearms, just holding this up and trying to balance. But let's try another piece of wood here, get some more curls. So now here, with a piece of maple, should be a little bit easier. Just trying to find a nice edge, plane down. I'm trying to build myself a little bit of a, sort of a tinder bundle. I don't have anything around here that I can use. I used it all up in the fall, and at this point I've been processing nice healthy curls for my tinder bundles. So bearing down, I'm not trying to get the finest of curls, but just some nice healthy pieces here that'll catch easy. And the kage is doing the work. Again, it's going to use a lot of forearm power to hold up this mass of a blade, but it can certainly do the work. And so here you can see, that's gonna make for pretty nice little tinder bundle to help me get this started. So overall, Kage doing a pretty good job.
processing down the fatwood now. This is always a key step for me, which makes things a lot easier. You'll see here, Kage doing a nice job. So the question now is, does this have any scraping capability? Well, Topps knives with a differential heat treat may not be able to scrape. And I can tell you with the coating, this is not gonna do that good of a job on the spine. But there are a couple areas where I wonder if we can just make it work. Not really. Let's get a different edge here. Yeah, a little bit, look at that. Get me some fuzz. Let's see if I can get this fire started here. Not the easiest and this is really Oh, stressing on my wrist. So, I mean, I might need to just get just a little more fuzz here. I might have to do it kind of with the blade and just go real easy and real light. And just really finesse some of these super fine curls here. can't make fluff scraping, you kind of got to get these real thin little slices of fatwood here, just super paper thin to hopefully catch a spark. It's not going to be easy, but it's the only way to do it without the ability to scrape and make fuzz. And these are super fine and thin, just extremely thin little curls, literally like paper thin. And now, finally, can I just get a spark off a ferro rod? It's not gonna happen this way. Can I do it like this? Come on, baby, nope. Probably not gonna happen. Blade, come on. There it is. Well, and so what do I think about the slicing and some of that finer work? 
Well, the Kumakage can definitely do it. It is going to be just a little bit of a struggle, but would you be surprised? I mean, with that overall forward blade length, it's definitely going to wear on you after a while doing those slicing tasks. But the nice thing is tops and their edge geometry always spot on. So a good sharp edge and capable of getting down and doing some of the carving tasks. Now I did have to get some slightly larger chunks to build out my tinder pile. It worked absolutely perfectly. And then with the fat wood, the capability of just easily splitting down and through and getting it prepared, that was very simple. Nice overall blade length and the ability to easily control my work. But then what about the scraping tasks? Well, a couple things. As I mentioned, tops leveraging that differential heat treat. Typically, tops knives have a hard time sharpening. You don't usually get a squared off spine. And often on top of that, you end up with a coating. That's certainly the case here with the Kuma Kage. So the Kuma Kage having this, I would say, just you know heavy coating over the top, not going to do much in the way of scraping. And I even tried using that bird's beak in the back, which did a little bit better. This is a place that I think if you were careful, you could sharpen that up and really make it an effective uh, scraping tool. But at the same time, obviously, you do want to be a little bit mindful of where your hands are going to be and the type of work you're going to do. You don't want to create a situation where you end up cutting yourself. But for me and what I was doing, I could certainly get away, I think, with sharpening this a little bit and doing some of those scraping tasks. And on top of that, it might have given me the ability to actually spark the ferro rod. Now, I did end up using the blade. I'm not a huge fan of that, but you can certainly do it. No edge damage, a little bit of rolling, actually, that I can feel it now. So there is a couple things, a little bit of sap on here accumulated uh, really from processing the fat wood, but then also, and you're not going to hear it, but my nail is definitely getting caught on that. It's got a little bit of a roll, a little bit of edge deformation from striking the ferro rod. So, I mean, I did that for the test. I did it for the demonstration. Um, you know, I did buy this with my own money. Um, and you know what? I use my tools. That's it. Bottom line, I don't really care. I mean, the, the whole purpose of having this is to figure out what it can do, what the capabilities are. And if I have a little bit of edge damage there, nothing that a little bit of ceramic rod work shouldn't take care of in worst case scenario, a little bit of a diamond stone. So overall, I can see, you know, a couple little chunks here and there, some little nicks, a little bit of edge damage. But you know what? It actually feels good. I like that. You know, you're going to get a little bit of edge damage when you use your tools. And well, in this particular video, bushcraft by short sword, bushcraft tasks, firecraft tasks, and just awesome. So with that said, a few last thoughts. Let's take a quick look at the sheath. Now the sheath is definitely suitable. Doesn't have the tightest lockup, but at the same time, it doesn't bother me. Does what it needs to. I'm not going to rock this inverted. Now you may, for a long carry, like if you're going to haul this, go for some sort of a strap to help hold this in place. Just add a little extra attention and safety. But overall, not a big deal. And I do like that it's fairly easy to draw out. I would like maybe a little more retention, but I'm not going to complain. Typical taco style sheath. A little bit of a drainage hole down the bottom. Nice amount of eyelets, perfectly done. You could probably do a few different things if you wanted to lash this to a pack, but it does come with this nice leather dangler. So this is something that Topps has been doing very well on a number of their models. And just a perfect addition here with an oversized D-ring, that nice leather strap capable of putting it on your belt. And you'll notice that for the most part, I do carry this on my weak side and I will do a nice cross draw to me for a larger blade that's very controlled and safe, where I can hold the sheath, draw the knife, put it back in, and I'm not worried about cutting myself, nor my gear, my fabrics, or materials that are sort of hanging off of me. So having a good cross draw definitely works, and the Kumakage sheath is definitely a quality sheath coming from tops. And so with that said, that wraps up the Kumakage Bushcraft by Short Sword Video. So cool, so fun. Thank you very much to Waysun Johnny Sai for just designing this beautiful blade. And thank you very much to the people at Tops for manufacturing it. As I mentioned, I did buy this with my own money, but that's because I believe in the product. I do like to support people and brands that I believe in. 
I've had numerous, numerous tops knives, and at this point, I've had a number of blades in my hands designed by Wei Sun Johnny Sai. Always great fun, always great driven purpose. And here with the Kumakage, oh, absolutely fun and quite effective. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. Hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.